What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Once again, you are at a view from the game, and I'm your host, Ken Ivey, aka Pimpin' Ken. I got a very, very, very uh, influential person. This person uh, I met because they challenged me, why don't you have a book for women? So I got the 48 Laws of Game Pimpology. So she said, okay, well, I'm going to do the 48 Laws of Game Pimpology. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss China. Hey, thank you, Ken, for having me. <laughs> thank you for coming. So make sure y'all subscribe, like, or share. That's how we get our views up. But you must subscribe so you can get a notification every time we put our shows out. This is probably, I don't know, whatever. So we got maybe 20, 30 episodes in the making. You know, we China's in one of those equations. So, uh, but what we also do, you know, these shows are geared and promoted by you know, uh, assistance and uh, support and, and donations. And ain't no nation like a donation. So if you want to uh, make sure this show and shows like this continue, hit that super chat or you can cash me at 404 790 9627. And if you like China's episode, most people, y'all know, when they like stuff, they uh, send a donation. Y'all can send her a donation to what's your cash app? China Doll 214. Yeah, China Dog 214. <laughs> so, uh, how you doing, sis? Good. How are you? I see you got some, bought some drinks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for the bottle you open, know, huh? Super Bowl weekend. We're trying to turn up. Yeah, yes, you know, yes ma'am. Do yes, a little pre-turn up. Yes, ma'am. So, so we're this over is here called, in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, this is the Harry Hines division. <laughs> Even in horn at his best, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yes, very so, much so. So, first of all, the question I want to ask you, so where did you grow up and, uh, you know, where were you born and, you know, what type of uh, childhood you had? Um, I've kind of been all over. I, I've been all over. Um, my my stepfather was in the, in the uh, railroad industry, mm -hmm. so we moved around a lot. So we went from Denver to Cali to Kansas and made it down here to Texas and... This is where it all kind of started. <laughs> what kind of student was you? As far as in school? Yeah. Did you get good grades? Um, yes, I did. I did. Um, I had a child at a young age, so um, I didn't get to complete. You didn't graduate? But down the journey, I did complete and went to college and got a degree. And you got a college, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I went okay. did that, you know. Okay, I understand. I had to go accomplish some things in life, so, you uh, know. Yeah. Yeah, so I did that and so, went back to school so and got a couple more trades. Did you have a two-parent household? Did your father live with you or did your, fa your, your father live somewhere else? No, it was not a two-parent household. So you grew up primarily with your mother? Yes. yes. So... Uh, what type of little girl was he? Was he fast? Was he, you know, because you ain't got no father there. You ain't got no, no. Uh, well, I had brothers. There. So, I had older brothers. So how, how was your they brother kept there? me. How old was they older than you? They kept me in line. One is like six years older than me, and then the other one's like three years older than me. So they really kept me in line. They were like, you know what? When my mom's at work, those were the people that took care of me. So. <laughs> You, you know, a lot of women like to say, oh, I got, I, got, I got Chinese eyes and, you know, and all this stuff, you know, I'm a China doll and all that. You actually are, your mother's actually from uh, Korea. Korea. So you actually, mm -hmm. your eyes, your slanted eyes, is, that's, that's, Asian that's, persuasion that's your Asian going persuasion. On, you know, yeah, yeah I'm so, the real China doll, Ken. You're the real I'm China who the doll. Mac was talking about. Oh, okay, all right, <laughs> all right, all right, China doll. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Shout out to Max Julian. Yeah. You know, may he rest in peace. That was my man. He did my he did my album. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Julian. <laughs> okay, so uh, so 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 growing up, you know, looking, you know, being. Uh, black and these, as we used to call it. You know what I'm saying? When we was young and, and having that. Well, they call it Blasians. Blasians. Yeah, we're Blasians. Yeah. So being a, being a, <laughs> being a little cute girl, you know that you know did you get accosted a lot by men? That you know did was you like they sweated you? Did you get sweated? Cause you had a baby at an early age, so I know you must have got sweated a lot, and guys really liked it, huh? Well, no. It was the opposite. No. Um. Like I said, my brothers were strict. Mm -hmm. You know, I I really wasn't able to have boyfriends and 
stuff like that. I, I hung out with them all the time. I, I was a tomboy. And, you know, I'd be fishing and hanging out with, with my brothers. So they never let nobody talk to me. Mm. It was always like, uh-uh, you can't talk to my sister. So was your brothers like, they was they Asian too? Or they yeah, they're black? mixed with Asian too. So both, all y'all Asian, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, they, we have dark, the same mom, but we have different fathers. Are they dark skinned like you? No, nope, they're light skinned. They're light skinned, they're mm -hmm. more Asian looking mm -hmm. like you, right? Well, you could tell they're mixed. Okay. One yeah. looked like he's like Mexican. Okay. Yeah, so, but, you know, I had the brother, so my mom didn't really have to too much worry about me because she told them, like, you got to protect your sister, and when I'm not here, you know, y'all look after things. And so, I didn't act up until they left. That was when I got So, how was you then? I was 15. Hmm. When so, they went off to college... That so was when I got a boyfriend. Did you get boyfriend. pregnant by your, your high school uh, mm -hmm. boyfriend? I did. Mm -hmm. My first love. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have a baby. You know how girls are. Yeah. I'm going to have a baby. And I and I literally planned it, Ken. Mm -hmm. I did. And I and I had a baby. I had my daughter. So you was promiscuous? Yeah. Well, no. I was trying to move out. So have you, have you ever, like, I tell people all the time, when I was young, I was molested by a lady when I was three years old. My baby said, have you ever been molested? Have you ever had no. experienced that? I've never, had, I've never been molested mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. I just really wanted to get out here and see what it was. You know, mm -hmm. like, I wanted to know how to break on it. Okay. Yeah. I, from you, a long... You're moving too fast, Sandy. You, you, you See, you got that biology and you ready to break a nigga no, right now. No, even then. Yeah, but but okay, okay, but well, we still in your childhood. Uh, that so, was when so, I was ready. So 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 okay. So <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Okay. So so let's go back. Let that breathe for a minute. Okay, okay so 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 you you're a little girl. Did you did you know your mama being Asian, uh -huh. so I'm pretty sure she kept y'all in a, a Asian neighborhood, a white neighborhood or in the hood. No, my mom loves black men. Okay. You know, um, so y'all lived in the hood? My mom was a foster child. So, when my, okay, so let's rewind. When my mom came here to the United States, my grandmother didn't really know how to speak English. What? So, some things that happened and all her kids got taken away and mm -hmm. put in foster care. Mm -hmm. And so my mom had, you know, grew up with black people mm -hmm. because she was in the black community. She went to a black school, but she wasn't accepted. And so she had a really hard time um, being accepted into any community because she was bi you know, had a, a she was biracial. Yeah, yeah. You know, she had a black dad and then. Uh, but your mama was mixed too. No, my grandfather was in the military mm -hmm. and my grandmother worked the military bases. Okay. And so she met my grandfather and he ended up claiming all the kids, including her sister's kids, and brought everybody over to the United States. Okay, so that's how you came about. So did you grow up in the hood? You know, did you, did you ever live in the hood? I, yeah, my mom was like, she was on Section 8. Oh, so yeah. also you was in the hood. Yeah, we so, was in so the did project. You, so, so did you experience gangs and all that shit and dealing all mm -hmm. that shit? Yeah, so my brothers was in gangs. You ever sell drugs? Yeah. Oh, you used to hustle before yeah. you got in the game? Mm-hmm. So what, 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 what you call hustle? What you was hustling? Weed or pills? You so cool? I did. I thought you just showed the, I thought, I thought you just showed the back between your back. I didn't know you so back. I was trying to find her. And then I said, hold on, this one ain't for me. We got to go to the You got the, the between your back, but you were selling yeah. crack. So, so how did that work? Did somebody put you on and gave you a pack of something or mm -hmm. your brother, you know what I'm saying, introduced Well, my brothers you? was already, you know, they was gangsters and they was out there doing their thing. And then when you I said You said you're talking about Chris, Bloods, GD, Vice GDs. Lord. GDs? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's my, that's what my family made And then represent. when they, you know, once I moved to Texas and I ran into people. They so was GDs in what state? Denver. There are some GDs in Denver? Mm hmm Okay, that's good. Hey, a man. lot of people from Chicago hey, free come down there. Free Labor Hoover. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's big. And so... And we, we, so, um, basically, when I came, like, shoot, all the OGs, they was they was fucking with me. You know, they was like, shoot, we, we like China. You know, they gave me my name, China Doll. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that from the game. My yeah. name was already China beforehand. 
that's when you and I to Fort never Worth, right? used China Doll. So you got the name the in Fort Worth, right? Yeah. But you was already selling. No, I started so, selling in Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. Okay, so okay, how how you do it? What you do? You just buy an ounce of sun and put mm-hmm. this in some baking soda, cut it up, and no, it, to it was already it was already made and packaged for me. Oh, so you was selling for another? Mm-hmm. He just gave it to me. Just gave it to you. You know, like. Like I said, like when it's in you, you know, you really don't have to do too much. Right. You know. So, so you, so, so you, you, you selling, you hanging out with the GDs, hanging out with the Crips, and uh, who knows those who. Mm-hmm. And you know, were you <laughs> ever in it yourself? I shoot, I thought I was. You thought you were. But you said I was a member. <laughs> I thought I was, boy. Because you, you were hanging out with them. I was hanging out with them. So, what they, was, call, what, what they, so they called you China. It, 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 that was your... Uh, no, when I, when I was hanging out with the Crips in, in Denver, my cousin was like the top... Crip. Top dude until he got murdered. Mm-hmm. And then when he got murdered, that's when I moved back to Texas. He mm-hmm. got shot 21 times. Mm. Yeah. At 21 years old. But when I say Ken, he was doing it like he was 50. Mm-hmm. He had a lot going on. Okay. Yeah, he, was, he was a boss. <laughs> he was a boss. Okay. Yes. Rest so, in peace to Spider Loke, you know. So. Rest in peace, Spider Loke. Yeah. So, so, uh, and I believe he led me to the game. So 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 now you know you, you you hanging out with the Crips, the Bloods, the GDs. You know not your family, the Bloods. Your, well, not the Bloods. Okay, <coughs> hanging out with the Crips and the GDs, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? You have a child, right? Oh, no, I had already had. You had the child already. Mm-hmm. So did your mother take care of your child? Or was you there to take care no, of the child? No, she was with me. Oh, you had your I child, went. so you was out there hustling, and you had your child with you. No, like my mom would babysit. Okay, but you know she stayed with me. Oh, okay. so. Um, I was homeless though for like three years. You 15. say homeless, you mean living on the streets or yeah. staying house to house? Yeah, I was like, I was 15 when I had her. I moved out and got emancipated mm-hmm. from my mom mm-hmm. to move with my daughter's dad. Mm-hmm. And me and him was living together and he was taking care of me, you know, because he was older than me. Mm-hmm. I've always liked older how, men. How, how old is your dad? Your baby? Her dad, yeah. he's four years older than me. Okay. So he was like 19 he, he and really I was older. 15. That was no real older guy. Y'all but still, he was older because he was in college. Mm-hmm. I was in high school. Okay. He had a car. You know, I thought I was cute, Ken. I was like, oh, he come pick me up from school. And uh, I thought I was so cute. Yeah. And then when I had my daughter, um, he went to prison. Mm-hmm. He went to prison so for he robbing. From, he went from college to prison? He did. He got that's, picked that's up at odd. the school. That's odd. He went and robbed some people before he went to school. Mm-hmm. And then they caught up with him and was watching him. They seen that I was living with him. They came and picked me up. Picked him up. Put me in a um, in like one of them little group homes. Mm-hmm. He went to jail for like four years. So when he went to jail, that hustling mode kicked in. He said, baby needs shoes. So, uh, when that's when it, I started when, selling. When, okay, you started selling, <laughs> right? So, uh, how long did you sell? For a week. A week. So how and did it you, didn't work? How did you get into to the and then the dance and then the game? Okay, so it didn't work. Okay, with the situation, mm-hmm. and I was like, gosh, what do you know? Like, I got it. I was getting evicted at mm-hmm. the time. And my grandfather had just passed away. Mm. And um, my grandfather was telling me, he was like, you know, just come take care of me. And he thought he was going to live. And he was like, just come take care of me. And I was like, okay. And at the time, I was trying to get things situated. I got evicted. Mm-hmm. I didn't know where I was going to go. But mm-hmm. he wanted me to move back to Colorado. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to even make it. So by the time I even made it back, he passed away. He came to me in a dream, mm-hmm. and he told me, you would never want for anything. And then maybe a month later, I started dancing at the club I was waitressing at, because I started waitressing. Mm-hmm. And then I started you dancing. You getting all that money. you like, hold on, I wait did. a minute. Wait I a minute. I'm in the wrong game. I did. 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 I
Yeah. No, for real. It was 300 pound girl up there on the stage. She getting buku money. I'm like, damn, man. I need that. Why am I over here waitressing? But waitresses make money too. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to lie. Mm -hmm. Waitresses can make some money. If you have a mouthpiece, you can make so some what, money. What, what club was that you first started dancing? Dallas Gentlemen. Back, oh, we in just, we 20, the other day. back in 2001, Ken, when it was jumping, all the celebrities I probably would go saw there. you didn't even know you, huh? I used to go there all the time. I remember it used to be live. Yeah. A That's couple why I met people. Visa, at, 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 at Visa at Dallas Gentlemen. Oh, yeah? Too deep. I used to go there and see them all the time. Back in like yeah, AO, early, AO, yeah, early two thousands, yeah. so, when so, it was live and everybody was up in there. I'm so there's a lot of pimps coming in there. And oh yeah. trying to knock you at if the you time? were if you were known, you would go to DGs. So 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 being you know once you flip from the waitress to the to the dancing, mm -hmm. what kind of shit the pimps used to say? You had what they? What, can you remember some of the lines um, they used okay, to say? Okay, so let me let me kind of go back, back when I. When I went from dan from the waitressing to the dancing, um, it happened so fast. You mm -hmm. know, everything happened so fast. And I had a friend. We was friends for a long time. We've been friends for a long time. And at the time, she was like, girl, I done ran into this spot over off of Harry Hines, you know, mm -hmm. they doing massages over there. And I'm mm -hmm. like, massages, you know, I'm like, what? She like, yeah, you know, I done made X amount of money. Like, I want to turn you on because I feel like you going to be good at it. Mm -hmm. I was like, for real? She's like, yeah. So I go over there and, you know, she turned me on to the people. And I'm like, okay, you know, so I get in there. I start making money. So I'm like, so you okay. Said making money, how much? The first time I made $800. 100 800 800 mm -hmm. okay, that's a decent trap. Yeah, and so I figured if I dance and I got that money plus the, you know, the massage So was you, money. you just doing massages or was mm -hmm. you doing extra shit? Like happy endings, but, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. You know how I go down. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I gave a massage and it was a real massage parlor. Like, mm -hmm. these people had it set up. I didn't know it was a P that was running it. Mm-hmm. Until, you know, you start knowing people and stuff like that. I did not know that. They had it so professional that I never knew. You never know it was a pimp spot. Mm -hmm. So how did, when did you find out there was, was some pimping? Uh, when I got with my folks. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. And he told you, hey, hey it's, these people, uh, this nigga's pimping. Yeah. Right here. We ain't for it be giving our trap to another pimp. You know what I'm saying? We ain't for to help him. So we not going there no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 bitch, yeah, bitch, get it right, hoe. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, we not going there <laughs> yeah, no more. Yeah, but I'm going to yeah. show you another route. And I was like, oh, yeah, what's the other route? Uh -huh. He said, come on, come ride with me. So you but you, you, you went straight to the pimping. So let's go back to the club. So you danced. How long did you dance before you got with some pimping? Um, three weeks. Three weeks? Yep. So what, what, what did the pimp say to make you just say, I want to okay, choose Okay, so up. this is how it happened. Um... I was working at the strip club. I was working, and then my friend turned me on to the mm -hmm. massage, massage thing. Mm -hmm. And then, and mind you, this all happened in three weeks, mm -hmm. okay? So. <laughs> so. You come right in the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm drunk one night. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was drinking those uh, hypnotic and Hennessy mm -hmm. all night. So, I'm, I'm fine. You toasted. Mm -hmm. So, I'm at the 7 uh, Eleven down the street from my house. And I'm just sitting in the car like this, like, and this guy comes and he walks up and he knocks on my window like mm -hmm. this. And I look up and I'm like, I'm like, what's up? And I wrote down the window. He was like, hey, you know, what's up? I seen you was sitting over here. Hey, how are you? And I was like, hey, you know, he look handsome. Mm -hmm. He had this nice navigator truck he had souped up on them 24s, you know. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, he a fly dude. And he said, hey, I want to give you my business card. Mm -hmm. You know, call me. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay. So I get the card and I look at it and it says, he's a car salesman. Mm -hmm. He has cars and stuff. And I had just bought this car that mm -hmm. I had that I was mm -hmm. in. I was like, oh shit, he a car salesman. He rolling, looking fly. Okay. But, Ken, I didn't have a phone. Because mm -hmm. mind you, I had only been dancing and doing this Three little weeks. thing 
for three weeks but I had bought a car and I was trying to get myself up and going because I didn't have anything I had just got evicted before yeah, my grandfather stuff. had passed away you know so I'm trying to get myself together plus I really didn't know the industry I didn't know the game so before you chose up this guy he he pulled up and navigated, he knocked on the window, he gave you his business card, it says he's a car salesman. Before you, did you know anything about the pimping and the hoeing? Did you know when you was at DG's, did you see any pimping? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Did you know, I saw did you know the game? Did you know that these no. hoes was, had chose up on these pimps and was paying these pimps? Mm -hmm. You didn't know that aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. So so now that you see this guy, your folks, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I mean, how, how did you break yourself to him? How did that part come about? You know, because if you didn't see no pimping, you wasn't no horn well, before I then. Well, I knew. I knew. I used to run into Neptune all the time. Mm -hmm. You I remember Neptune? Maybe rest in peace. Yeah, that's my funny. I ran into Neptune a couple times because he would come in there in DGs all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would run into California Mike all the time because he Shout sat up in that motherfucker all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> he used to sit in that thing. I'm talking about 24 hours. And I used to see him all the time, but, you know, he never really tried it. I don't think he knew that I would go. Mm -hmm. I had the potential like that, you know. Because yeah. I think if he knew that, he would have been pressing me a little bit more because yeah. he real aggressive. Yeah. And so, um, it was crazy because I met L completely somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I didn't even meet him at the club. Yeah, I met him at 7-Eleven. Right. You know? So, it was like destined that I was supposed to meet him. And he was a really good P. Manager. He was. It's a like, manager. <laughs> okay. He was a really good manager. Uh -huh. He he really was. Like, um, as far as just his program in general, like everything. So, so you got lucky in your first encounter with the Pippin was No, a he wasn't in my first encounter. Oh, you know what, Ken? I'm going to back it up. I did run into this one dude named Slick. I'll Slick. never forget Slick. Mm -hmm. Slick was a slick motherfucker. Okay. Right. And Slick was trying to get into the game at the time because he was like a little gangster doughboy mm -hmm. type dude, mm -hmm. you know? And I'll never forget, he found out I had talked to Neptune outside. Mm -hmm. Somebody told him, because he was trying to act like he wanted to be my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And somebody had told him, and I'll never forget, he slapped the shit out of me, right? What? Slapped the shit out of me. He was like, you was outside talking to Neptune. And I'm like, hold on, nigga, I get in your car and you just hit me, nigga, what? So, so he was a gorilla. this was during the three weeks. <laughs> This all happened in three weeks. Damn, girl, your ass was fast when you do a hot motherfucker. You. This happened in three weeks. <laughs> you just so, wanted, you was curious, huh? You got some So game, when I huh? ended up met, meeting L, that's when I was like, um, he was like, let me show you another way. Let me, you know, because I had told him, I was like, you know, I dance at this club. I thought he was finna come spend some money. Mm -hmm. Really, to tell you the truth, I thought he was a car salesman. So, how did you know? When did you know it was Isma? When did you break yourself? He told me, because I had told him I was working at that massage parlor place. Mm -hmm. And he was like, let me show you an, some, another way to get some money. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, okay, okay, I'll, I'll try it. You know, I'm a, I'm, I take chances. Mm -hmm. And he was like, all right, I'm going to scoop you and pick you up. So, we rode and went to um, Carla, gave him a, a call. To give to call me, it right after you. To give to me. Mm -hmm. And um he he said, Okay, you know, he took me to the hotel where the people was he told me what to do before we got there, what you know, what I needed to do. So I went in there and I made five hundred dollars on that call. Went to another one after that. He had another one set so up. So how much you had to get call out there five hundred? Um, I think I gave her like a hundred dollars. Oh, I, I got the call. Well, no, it was like an upgrade. Okay. So, I gave her $100, I think. I don't know. I gave him the money. So, mm -hmm. he gave her the fee, you mm -hmm. know? So, I don't so really know. So, how did it feel choice. making your own money and then go from making your own money and have to give it to a nigga? I mean, did, did, okay, did you Okay, we'll, did you we'll feel? go from there in, in a minute. Okay. So, we went on that second call and I was like, damn, I didn't make $800 plus the money that I made at the massage parlor. Okay, shit, I done made some dough. So I'm like, oh, shit, you know? And he's like, you know, shoot, you know, you see how this works? I say, yeah, this is cool. You know, I'm like, hell yeah. He's like, so 
he stayed consistent mm -hmm. on me mm -hmm. for the pat for the next maybe two weeks. He stayed real consistent, mm -hmm. and he said, "You want to go to Hawaii?" I said, "Hell yeah, I want to go to Hawaii." <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> At the time, he never said, "I'm a man for none of that shit." He never said that because mm -hmm. the type of man that he is, he doesn't, he don't, Claim. he don't do, he he does, he claims it. But he's real laid back. He's mm. real in the cut type smooth, shit. Yeah, smooth. so he don't be like, oh, I'm just this, do, 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 do. He like, shit, bitch, let's get this bread. I don't give a fuck about no title. Let's go get this money. Mm -hmm. You know? So he was like, um, you want to go to Hawaii? I'm thinking we're going on a vacation because mm -hmm. I done made this money. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in Dallas. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. He done seen I done made this money. You know, we done stacked it. Now it's time to go on a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you just going just go on a vacation. You're going on a vacation, bitch. <laughs> what you thought? What the fuck you mean? You going to work out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I was like, yeah, I want to go to, I want to go to Vegas. Mind you, this is a month and a half in. Mm -hmm. Because, mind you, I got in the game in December with the dancing, you know, by myself. This all happened in December. My grandfather died in November. Mm -hmm. I got started dancing in December. Mm -hmm. I met him in December. Mm -hmm. We worked. For 30 days or so. For 30 days. Mm -hmm. And then we flew over to Hawaii. Did you like it when you was over there? I loved it. Did you work the track or you worked mm -hmm. uh, the lines? The track. So you here he is, fresh off the project, fresh from selling crack. You know your, your father's died. You, you, a brief stint at the uh, fucking uh, strip club, a little massage parlor game. Then now you work in the lines. Now you on the track. You hey, you know what I'm saying? You went, you died right into the hole, huh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't you didn't have a helmet, like, huh? I was like, where is that? It was so fancy. But can I ask you a question though? Uh huh. And and I'm gonna ask you this question for the people out there. As a former pimp, right, mm -hmm. you know, and had multiple hoes, I never had a bitch that I flipped or I just, you know, conned a trick into the horn, right? It's a misconception in society that pimps, you know, just run up on hoes and, and get in their head and make them do this shit, you know what I'm saying? I mean, can you let the people know, and just from your conversation, that this was by choice and not by force and that... You know what I'm saying? Your experience of a, a veteran in the game, you know, the hoes that you've been around, can you kind of give us that perspective that a lot of us don't know that's out there? A lot of them don't know about how hoes choose pimps, how hoes come in the game, because I know you feel the right to book hoology. You know, can you break that down for us before we get back into the interview? Well, you know, there's different levels to the choosing, mm -hmm. you know, and I was a turnout. Mm -hmm. This was my turnout folks. Right. So it's a little different when you're a turnout and you've already, and someone that's already been with some other person's game, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where the choosing fee comes into. Mm -hmm. And I feel like nowadays niggas ain't even asking for choosing fees. No. I know that for a fact. No. I know for a fact. Niggas take Happy Meals now. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. They do. Yeah. They do. And and back in the day, people was choosing up with twenty, thirty, hundred thousand. Am mm -hmm. I right or am I wrong? You're right. You're right. And nowadays, you don't see that. And this is why you don't really have really, really like bona fide hoes. Mm -hmm. These bitches be faggots. Mm -hmm. They don't really be you no know, bona fide work, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You got real life prostitutes out here. There's different um, avenues, mm -hmm. so that's why I was saying there's different ways on on the, as choosing. far as people choosing up, you know. And when I chose up, it was not on because I had fucked with somebody else. Mm -hmm. This was he molded me. Mm -hmm. This is this mold is him. That's his game. Mm -hmm. It did not come from nobody else. So and it went forced. It was never forced. I was already I was already out here. It actually so made why, it better. Why do you think people always say that these pimps are forcing these women into prostitute and that these pimps don't do nothing but beat on these hoes and all this shit? You know, and and you just talking to you, and you know your story is very interesting, and just talking to you, 
I mean, you are the perfect example of what we've been trying to tell society. And even with the human trafficking laws and all this other shit that's going on, we try to tell, hey, man, these bitches is whoring already. These bitches going to get their money regardless. You know, y'all think pimps is forcing these hoes. These hoes, you know, like China, you know what I'm saying? She come in the game. You know, she like what uh, L was doing. L level her up. And, you know, y'all already know her story. Y'all ain't, we ain't getting into all the businesses she owned and all the shit that she got from the game that she got from L. You know what I'm saying, me? So, you know, uh, can you just explain to them about that part? You know, just you in your many years of hoeing and being in the gang, can you just explain that, you know, you had a lot of either wife in laws or, or, or what we call whole partners, you know what I'm saying, me? Your whole partners who just actually really loved the game and was in the game for the game. Yeah, you know what? I've never had a whole partner. Oh, you never that associated is the new with generation hoes? shit because I was the type of bitch. You come home, you gonna be my wife in law. We gonna be close like that. We gonna oh, be that's friends. Real shit. That's you real coming shit. home? You gonna pay? You gonna come pay? You gonna pay and me. make sure that we, you know, pay we team up together. Because if we hit a lick, all that need to come home. Right. I'm not gonna have our lick mm-hmm. going home to another person because mm-hmm. I could have called my wifey. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I ain't gotta call so no over. Pro- never. But did you have hoes that over the years you became cool with? No. Oh, <laughs> you, mm-hmm. you raw with it. Huh? If, if we came cool, we was doing business. Uh-huh. You know, that's it. Like, business is business. I ain't never been cool with nobody and no money was ever involved. Do you okay. get what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I can dig that. Like, that's, that's I, it has shit. to make sense. Just that's like I don't shit. go out unless I'm getting the door. My hoes need, you know? need to think like you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe the money will come home to the family. You know, maybe the pimp will be able to have some more money to turn I the whole. I think that's why I want to be in a poly relationship. A poly relationship. I do. I really thought about it. You know, like I can't be with a square. Mm-hmm. And I've tried. You tried. And I, and it don't work. And I feel like I would do really good in a poly relationship. You know, so because you should, I really maybe you like to become a Muslim or something. You know, they they, they got nine wives. Well, and shit. I I'm part of you know Yerba. Yerba. So Yerba. 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 That's what's I'm sure that. I didn't know about Yerba. I don't know. He might know that. Like, it's the seven it's African a, saints. Oh, with all the little bees and mm-hmm, shit. The oh. Egyptians, Kemet. You mm. know, I went all the way back to ancient Egyptian when I went to. We're gonna talk about was, that. We're gonna talk I about that because I, 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 I did. I, we're gonna we're gonna get on that. Okay. I'm gonna keep it uh, in this area. So so you saying that uh, you never had, but from your personal perspective and your wife in laws, your wifey's right. Mm-hmm. Have they all? Was they all? Did they all choose up? Was it by by choice and not by force? I mean, did any of your wife in laws ever feel like, oh, I'm being forced into mm-hmm. this lifestyle? No. No, nope, they never did. Explain, explain that. They never was I, forced. I, I, you want to know why? What is the, what is the, you we know, live what is like what? celebrity? Yeah, so what, tell us about the, the, the whole uh, 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 household thing, you know, being with So the there's pet. different households, and I feel like there's some households out there that are fucked up. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You really got some messed up people out here in the world. You mm-hmm. got people out here that really do be beating on a bitch because she don't want to go to work or. Maybe she, she feel uncomfortable of doing the things, but that's because that's not for her. Mm-hmm. It's not her lane. So that's when I be like telling people, that's when you need to go on and fire her and get you a new bitch because she's not with what you putting down, you know? So it's like, that's the force. Mm-hmm. If a bitch over there saying, I don't want to go to work today. Bitch, you need to go to work. We need this money. That's force. Mm-hmm. But if a bitch get out there and say, you know what, today I'm going to go make me a million dollars and I'm going to go make this shit work because, daddy, I want to make it, make you proud. Mm-hmm. And she get out there and go do what she do and come home and, you know. And sock it to your pocket. So, I had a lot of hoes pay me and you just said something that I want to, you know, I want your perspective because I <laughs> hoes will say anything. Bitch will fix her mouth to say whatever, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? A lot of these bitches, you know what I'm saying? They got diarrhea in the mouth. They talk a whole bunch of shit, right? <laughs> so, as a as a as a, as a one who had folks, right, a, a, a real live stomp down that had folks, you said, "Daddy, I want to make you proud." So when you giving your money to your nigga, right? Is mm-hmm. you thinking like, "Oh, I'm just going through the motions," or you saying, "Oh, we for the level up, or we gonna build something," you know, you know? And, and you said, "Proud." Do you want to just make that nigga that nigga? Or what is the motivation behind giving a nigga your money 
when you know that you got a thousand dollars, you can do a motherfucking left turn or a right turn. You ain't got to go straight home. You can you, well, you can know detour what? At the and, time, and keep the money yourself. At the time uh, when I had got in, my folks was already kind of on. He already had things in motion. You know, it wasn't like he really needed my money. Right. He just needed my so it money. It made you to feel kinda, comfortable, huh? It did. Because it let me know you already handling your business. I'm not helping see, you. See, see, young pimps, that's what I was trying to tell you. See, now y'all hearing it from a host perspective, right? I told y'all, man, do not sell the bitch the dream. Be the motherfucking dream, man. Go continue. Yeah, because if, if I see that you... Okay, for instance. If I see you going to jail mm -hmm. for some dumb shit, mm -hmm. and you can't even instruct yourself, mm -hmm. how am I supposed to know that you can instruct me? Why are you going to follow his instructions? So you look for order, you look for stability, uh, stability you look for a program when you fuck with a nigga. So, and the stability so, is really it because I'm giving you my, my funds, and this is what's providing my stability okay give you a scenario i'm pipping like a motherfucker right mm -hmm. i got six white holes and six black bitches you're asian persuasion with a little malaysian in there right <laughs> you know what i'm saying me so you say hey ken i want to choose up on your pimping so you give me 30 bands right mm -hmm. it's 12 bitches in the household already that makes you the 13th bitch when you go into the household do you go in with the intentions to say i'm going to be the main bitch or I'm just here to contribute, or do you feel like, damn, I'm the damn near the last bitch on the tour and pole? I mean, how? Because you know, I always, you know, ho, in, in my in my experience, trying mm -hmm. to real talk, hoes would come in, and you know, I got a bitch that been down for years. This mm -hmm. bitch is really, you know, what I'm saying about my money, right? And she know my program, and hoes would come in, they ain't even been in my program, and they think they can push this bitch out the, the way. way. Yeah. Well, sometimes a bitch will get out the way. Mm -hmm. She'll get intimidated. Yeah. You know, when I came in with my turnout, he had seven white bitches. Mm -hmm. And all seven of them didn't last. And that's how I gained my way up to the top of the ladder to be the bottom bitch. Yeah, I, I was mean, never considered or given that title of being the bottom bitch. But I, I was knew. talking to uh, Callie, uh, Callie Dream. And, you know, because we're going to interview her. And, and she, and I was giving, prepping her interview. And she was saying, yeah. She said, Ken, I never ran a bitch off. I just outhold the bitch and the bitch ran off. So that's that's really be the situation. But then a faggot bitch will try to make it look like, oh, that bitch is a faggot. Even and if I had chose that with 30000 mm -hmm. I still going to outhold y'all. Right. And see, that's what happened when I climbed up the ladder. Mm -hmm. I was getting to it because I wasn't worried about. So it was seven white bitches. And you end up being the bottom bitch. I ended up being the bottom bitch. So, so, so when you became the bottom bitch, if you can come through and you can move them seven holes out the way, have you ever thought about bitches when you was the bottom bitch? When he'd bring other holes in, that you ever thought that these bitches can possibly move you out the way? No, you want to know why? Why? I was always a team player, mm -hmm. and I always made sure we all got some money because I knew it was all going to the same pot. Mm -hmm. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Rather if she was going or not, hey, come on, y'all. I, I got somebody over here. I got about three tricks over here. And I need three of y'all to come on over here so we can so take... So the more than Mary. That part. And I knew that if I handled my business, he going to make sure I'm good. Whatever I wanted, whatever car, house, jewelry, whatever I wanted, he took care of. So how do you deal with when he want to fuck y'all? Do you say... Okay, nigga, I want you to fuck these hoes in front of me, or did, no? Did, did you want to be? Really did you want to participate? I was that? always treated like I was just the only bitch. Mm -hmm. You know. But you wasn't the only bitch. I wasn't the only bitch, but I felt like he I made was you the feel only special. Bitch. Yeah, so he made all y'all feel he special. He made me feel special. All you hoes. I think special. I was probably the special one. How you know? You don't know what you're telling them other hoes. I was you the only around? black bitch. Huh? I was the only black bitch, or Asian and black. I was that the don't only mean that one, you were special. You know? Hey, what about that blonde, blue-eyed, white bitch, that all-American, mighty whitey, that funky hunky, that cocaine with the space, with that was probably she did her job. So, yeah, she so did how you know he? How you know he was telling that bitch she was a special bitch? She probably, he probably I, did to make I, sure I, I that used to money tell one bitch, from. I would tell one bitch, yeah, you that bitch, you know what I'm saying? Watch them other hoes. I tell mm -hmm. that bitch, you that bitch. Watch them hoes. I had them hoes watching each other, making sure them hoes were stealing this shit and making sure them hoes, you know what I'm saying? When felt he came down to the they, retirement camp, uh -huh. that's when I knew. Yeah. I never knew then because he never really gave anybody a. Um, it was always it felt equal. But I think but, I think. 
China, you know what I think? You, you, you remind me of a goldfish. Mm-hmm. You know, if you throw a goldfish in the water, he in this he in this comfort zone. I think that you know you was a a stomp down. You know, uh, uh, you was just meant to be in this shit. So I think that your cre- to your credit, you accepting the game and mm-hmm. and taking to the game like a fish take to go like a, a goldfish take the water. I think that that probably made you all last these bitches. I think a lot of these bitches, you know, when they choose up on pimping, mm-hmm. they cheerleaders. They just cheering the pimping on. Like I have five hoes and one of them hoes will really be down with the pimping. You know what I mean? And I think he was that bitch that was really down with, with, with your guys pimping. No, you want to know why I was down with him though? Really, to be honest? Mm-hmm. I was so mad about people lying to me. I don't mm-hmm. like liars, you right. know? Mm-hmm. And the game is like honest. Mm-hmm. It's very honest, you know, and it was no lies. It was like, hey, this is it. This Sometimes is you gotta lie. He never lied to me. You ain't never lied? He never lied to me. He lied sometimes. He, he never lied to me. I mean, you might have known, not, you might not think it was a lie. He never lied to me, Ken. If he did, I never knew it. Okay, just say that. If say, he I, did, never I know. never okay, knew that, it. Okay, that sounds more better because but, at some but point, I, everybody lies. But nine times out of ten, I catch people in lies. Nobody keeps it 100. China. They I, might keep I it. Pump, and listen, people they keep it at seventy five, <laughs> but they don't keep it one hundred. You know what I'm saying? So you know, know. So it's some line. It's some. It's some shit. Anytime I fuck with a bitch, bitch say, "Yeah, I'm a big old hoe. Yeah, daddy, I want to pay your pimping and this and that and the other." I say, "All right, come on in, bitch." You know what I'm saying? Me socket to my pocket, bitch. You know what I'm saying? She trapped, trapped that choose feet, but I always leave twenty five percent for this bitch to be bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Me and nine times out of ten, you know what I'm saying? Me. When I put that motherfucking pressure on that bitch, I put that motherfucking Milwaukee press on that hoe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Me, she ain't all that she said she was. Right. Okay. So go ahead. Well, basically, I I respected it because of the honesty part. You know, okay. like I'm gonna say why I felt like it was honest. When before I met him, I would lie all the time. Mm-hmm. Like why? Just to be lying, you know? Mm-hmm. And he was like, damn, bitch, why are you always lying all the time? And I'd be like, damn, you know, I don't know. I'm just a compulsive lying ass bitch. Mm-hmm. And got my ass whooped for lying, mm-hmm. you know? And then after that, Ken, I ain't never lie. I've always told everybody the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I told you one time, huh? Yeah, and he told me the truth about everything. Like, I, I don't think I've ever been in a situation where I was like, okay, this nigga lied to me, so... You and know, you, I can't you, trust them. And you know what? The same thing you say, a lot of my hosts used to say. They said, Ken, the reason why I fuck with you because your first name Pimpin' and your last name Ken. Mm-hmm. You're not lying to a bitch. If you say your name Pimpin' Ken, the bitch knows she finna get pimped on. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and that's one of the things that I told them. I said, I don't want to lie to a hoe when I'm pimping. I want the bitch to be wide or woke. Hey, bitch, it's pimping the hoe the best thing going. Because you know it's her saying? decision. Yeah, it's her decision. Because if you lie, then that's the force. I, didn't want to, I, I never wanted a bitch that wasn't with it. Mm-hmm. You understand me? I never wanted a bitch that wasn't with it. Every bitch I fucked with, we was all deep, deep in the game. I'm talking about, and you know, I knocked a lot of pimps for they bitches. You know what I'm saying? Me, pretty white hoes, Asian bitches, all kind of bitches. You know what I'm saying? Me, I knocked them from the niggas because they knew my name was Pippi Kid. Right. My name would be in, you know, we call it the pimp net, right? Yeah. So my name would always be in the pimp internet, and hoes would be like, they're reaching there. Nine times out of ten, I'd be the motherfucker that they'd choose up on. Mm-hmm. And then other hoes would say, yeah, you know, Ken, you know, he's solid. You know, he ain't going, you know, you know me. You not even finna be fucking on no hoe for free. You know, mm-hmm. I, ain't finna, I ain't trying to go up in no bitches pussy and shit. You know, it's <laughs> not, it's very few bitches that, 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 that ain't paid me unless you go back to high school. That ain't paid me to fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? On some level. So you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, and bitches will tell on niggas. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you go and you fucking this bitch and that bitch, I had bitches, gorgeous bitches, right there. You know, butt naked. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I'm not going. Right. You know what I'm saying? If they're not paying, <laughs> I'm not playing. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, and if they're paying like they're weighing, they can stay in. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, after, you know. Some people, they go on for the, for the free and not the fee. Yeah, yeah, because. Because they desperate that's for a bitch. That's pimping. Because they desperate for a bitch. You know, yeah, because, you know, they, they, see, <laughs> they see a young lady like yourself, you know, that's Asian. You know, we all grew up, you know, talking about, oh, man, that's, look at that uh, black, you know, Malaysian, whatever you call it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's to, to us in the hood, you know what I'm saying? You know, you see a, a, a sister that's mixed with Asian, you know what I'm saying? That's the definition of beauty. We, we taught to believe that that's supposed to be what you look for. Mm-hmm. So 
a lot of times, dudes be thinking, oh, I'm gonna get that bitch a baby. I'm for the, I'm for the, I'm for the lay one up in her. I'm for the drops of seeds in her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Me, whereas you know, a real pimp be like, man, I'm for the drop. I ain't for the put no motherfucking hands. I'm for the put some plans on her. I'm not for the raise her skirt. I'm for the raise her motherfucking uh, her financial status. Right, her you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so that's how we looked at it. You know what I'm saying? Me, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I mean, but anyway, so 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 now you know what I'm saying. You you went through the the, the shit with, with with your folks and shit. You know what I mean. You in the game. Y'all went to Hawaii. When did y'all decide that it was time to go separate ways? I mean, did he do something? When I that, made that hundred and twenty thousand in a month. You made hundred and twenty in a so month. So I ended up making my over probably a million that year. Oh yeah. And that's why you left? Because you made mm -hmm. a million dollars? No, we was good. You know, we had bought some stuff and started some businesses. He bought me my first house. And and then I was still young, Ken. You mm -hmm. know, I still had a lot of more So did time. you do some out-of-pocket shit? Did you uh, make yeah. any mad moves? You fuck with any other pimping? No. Why you just, you no. Just... Eight years straight. Um, no. So you, I didn't. You fuck. So, so I got a saying that a bitch usually fuck with a pimp four years. After four years, he get reelected like Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. So what made you reelect your folks after four years? Was, was, was it just that good? Was, you know, was you, you winning? You know, for you to stay with nigga eight years, you know, in that game, that's a hell of a long time. Um, Cause I'm pretty sure you didn't have a lot of wife laws come and go, right? You know what, Ken, to be honest, it was very selective. Mm -hmm. and that was another thing what I liked about him. Everybody can just come and fuck with us. You they didn't know, qualify. It, it, all my wife in laws, they stayed down for years. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no in and out. Mm -hmm. And even if it wasn't in and out, she she was never introduced to the stable unless she really, really came with it. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten, if they didn't stay down for six months or longer, we never knew about them. Okay. You know, it might have been an interview here. We didn't know about no you, interview. You know, you know, I know your folks. That's my partner. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, know that, I just don't want to put you know, there. But, you know, hey. Matter of fact, hey, man, shout out to her folks. He the one got me. This is in 2000. I bought the brand new 2000 Benz. He plugged me up the next day. About two, a week, two weeks later, I went and bought the Escalade. You know, and I was always buying cars with cash. He gave me the game on how to, you know, go get the cars off the lot. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So L, you know what I'm saying? I always shock. I seen the navigator. That motherfucker was cold. I said, man, dude. You know what I'm saying? Woo, 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 woo. Mm -hmm. And you know he liked me. You know what I'm saying? Because I was a, I was a real nigga. He's like, man, I'm gonna show you something, man. I said, oh man, that's how these niggas been doing this shit. You know, mm -hmm. I'm from Milwaukee, so we don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We goddamn country boys. You know, these niggas was getting brand new cars off the showroom and off the lot, so we didn't know how to do that. He taught me how to do that, and he you know, gave me some game on, on on how to you know maneuver certain things. Even on some cribs, I was supposed to buy the crib, but uh, my cousin G Good bought the crib instead. But I was supposed to buy the crib, you know. So you know, shout outs to L man. He was a real he he is a real motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So I can you know he was a gentleman too. Very. He was very smooth, very laid back, very humble. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Me so. I can see you staying with him for eight years because he wasn't about that rah rah shit. I was rah rah, but I was a successful rah rah. Nah. I wasn't no, I wasn't no rah rah ghetto nigga. I just, I don't know. I got diarrhea in the mouth like them hoes. You know what I'm saying? I just talk a lot of shit. Them hoes talk a lot of shit. I was a shit talker. You know what I'm saying? Me. So you know, I, you know, was that. But you know, me and him, you know, we we had similar shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like we had similar appetites as far as success. I like nice things. He liked nice thing, but you know, shout out to L. He did introduce me to the first car that I bought year on year. Mm -hmm. Then I went and bought the truck year on year. Now, I think the truck might have been uh, even newer. You know, it was probably fresh. So yeah, so you know, shout out to my man L. So uh, uh, L, we finna get off you. <laughs> Enough of you, L. <laughs> so now L is gone, right? You know, mm -hmm. you're on your own, and. That's when I kind of, you know, started noticing, you know, you's a very astute businesswoman. You didn't had several businesses, you know, uh, you know, you made a lot of money. I ain't never seen you in a regular car as a BMW or Benz or an Audi or something fresh. You know, once you left L, you didn't choose no more people, right? Mm -mm. So you just, so you took the gain that you got from him and, you know, 
you 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 uh, got into the business. Can you explain some of the business you had and you know the philosophy and the science behind? Because I know your mother, your family is Korean and they was into the game. Your mom was into the massage shit too, right? No. Oh, uh, your your my, grandma. My yeah, yeah, grandma. Um, my grandmother was just a real life hoe. Oh, she wasn't no massage. <laughs> it was she was a hoe and then turned into a madam, you know. Um, but also oh, you you was born in this shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mhm. Um. So basically, with the, with the, when I got out, I had went to school mm -hmm. because I was angry, Ken. You know, I hadn't finished school, and I feel like that was like something that was like a, a void. I didn't get to fill in that void and just finish that. And I, I knew that's something that I needed to do to be mm -hmm. able to move forward. Mm -hmm. So I had went and applied for different schools and I finally got accepted into a school for dental. Mm -hmm. And um, I got my GED. Mm -hmm. And then they ended up putting me into this um, associate's degree program. Okay. So I did professional development, business courses, got mm -hmm. all my, my basic um, you know college classes done mm -hmm. and as i was going to school you know you're studying you're researching i had learned so much just mm -hmm. you know reading and researching things and and just get my mind more filled knowledgeable as far as the book side of things in the instead of street smart you know mm -hmm. i had the street smarts but i feel like you know i'm still smart on the on the other side and so that professional development class mm -hmm. is really the one that put me into uh a, being a business woman as far as structuring business so what's the first business you open um nail shop you open a nail shop well you're korean so that kind of I don't, I don't know if that's stereotypical. Well, after I went to school for the dental, I went to, to the cosmetology, and I got my cosmetology license. And I was like, you know, I've always loved doing nails. So did did you do well with the nails? Oh, yeah. I still do nails to I mean, this day. You, I'm saying, but did you do well with the business? What was the second business you I grew. With? I grew this business all the way to where I, I added services on. So I started just with nails. Mm -hmm. And I, I built up a, a nail base mm -hmm. at a salon place. And I started in like a little room, like mm -hmm. a little suite. You know mm -hmm. how they got them little suites? Mm -hmm. And then um, from that, I ended up just growing and getting bigger and bigger. And all the way till I got one shop, two shops. I had three shops going at one time. Mm. So you was a real business woman. Three shops. And so I had added nails, facials massages and um uh pedicures um waxing like anything that had to do with the business eyelash extensions whatever they had to do with the beauty industry i tried to bring into my business because they all have avenues to make money you know so i was hiring independent contractors just to come in and work into my shop and then you know it just got a lot it was a lot it so, was really a lot. So was the money good? It was good, but it was a lot. Because you have to understand, people don't work like you. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. You might have a real go-getting, you know, hustle to you. But then you got Jasmine over here. She don't have that same Motivation, hustle as you. Yeah. So now you got someone that, that's really a waste of time, a waste of money, a waste of marketing. I remember uh, when I used to have the store, used to come in and shop with me all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I, 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 I believe I heard you, but I may have heard you incorrectly. I heard that you call call yourself having you some bitches at one time. Huh? <laughs> um, no, I mean, you know what, Ken? It's like, it's in you. And it's always gravitated to me. And like I said, I always brought brought them home anyway so it's always been natural so once you start having a bitches around you and bitches was you know working in your different facilities and stuff like that did you feel like you know no i had created service line service you lines. know i i knew a couple people from me working that gave me the game on the service lines and then i started my own service line and there was people that wanted to come and get so many, you know, or I helped them out, or single moms that really needed that extra avenue, or maybe some bitches that didn't 
make their trap and they needed to make they trap that night them extra calls to come through so like you know it was like a, a help but i never really just was out here just like pimp uh, call yourself a pimp. i've never no because you know you can never be a fucking pimp. You know what I'm well, saying? you have madam. Yeah, 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 and yeah. So, so that's let let see that see she understand the game. See that's that's why I like talk. She a lot of bitches get on my show. They say, oh, I was a pimp. No, you are not a pimp. You you can be a pimptress. You can't be a waiter. You could be a waitress. You can't be an actor. You could be an actress. But you could never be a fucking pimp. You could probably at, at the most, and that's just for gra grammatical purpose. You could be a pimptress, and I don't even believe that should be a word. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? I mean, now that you had your little service lines, right? Did mm -hmm. you encounter certain shit where motherfuckers was like, did, you know, you know how you say, you, you when you had your folks faggots to come to the door, did you ex experience that? Oh yeah. You, well, fuck with oh, faggots yeah. and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know what? When I first got in the game, I'm gonna say, he'll tell me. He said, China, they gonna hate on you. They gonna hate on you. That was the first thing he told me, Ken. Mm -hmm. And this whole time that I've been in the game, anytime, even friends, like, they'll get mad at me, and that'd be the first thing that they attack. It's, it's your my beauty. money. Oh, your money. My money. They know I make a lot of money. You know? I don't need nobody to so make no money. So what's the most money you made at money. one night, at one time, if you can remember? 20 years ago? 15000 So you, you caught 15000 What's the most you broke one trick for? Like yeah. a sugar daddy, a sugar daddy. Oh, like mm. ha, when we say run it up, did you run them up to a million? I still have 000? the same sugar daddy right now for the past twenty years. So you're talking millions. I have the same sugar daddy right so, now so, for the past twenty years. Yeah, I'm breaking. on the wheel. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting the forty acres and and the mule. Oh, so you, you got game for real? I got the forty. No, real talk. I got the forty acres and a mule, Ken. Mm. Oh. Oh, so you you bought that life. You know what I'm saying? At least you, at least you, you know, your home went in vain, so to speak. So, oh, so, so you said you had bitches that hate on you, and they would see you making money. You trying to level them up because they need some money. They homeless and shit, and they backstab you. And how do that feel coming from some pimping and seeing it in the pimps? Even my world? wife and laws would do it. So I'm, that's what I'm saying. So when you when you seen that with your wife and laws. That was understandable. You understand me that a bitch trying to No, I thought maybe we're on the same team. We're no, but I'm just saying, like, but you we're know. We're all supposed to stick together. But you know, Don Juan said something that pips up holds down. He said, if I allow y'all to vote, who's going to be pimp of the year? Who's going to say they're number two? So, you know what I'm saying? Even, you know, hoes. I don't give a fuck how docile or how humble they may seem to be. Mm -hmm. All them hoes have one destiny, and that's to be the bottom bitch. Mm -hmm. They want that nigga that you call your pimp or your daddy, whatever the fuck. They want to be with that nigga. So, you know what I'm saying? That's some faggot shit. So, leaving that, we, we like I said, we're going to move from L. And then you having your services and shit and still have to deal with that faggot shit. What do you say to that? You say it's just a lot of faggot bitches, a lot of jealous motherfuckers in the world. What? Yeah, even to just... Even having swearing up and doing things the right way can, mm -hmm. it still backfired on me. Mm -hmm. You know, I had people that came and worked for me just in the salons and they was like hating, you know, because mm -hmm. it was like, you're not supposed to have this. You're not supposed to have this. I'm supposed to have it. Right. But I really, you know. but I want to see how you got it. Yeah. How did you get it? Oh, you was out here doing X, Y, and Z. So this is how you guys see you a hoe. You know, that's the the concept. Oh, I could never do that. See, they, people don't take chances. Mm -hmm. They don't. And this is why they miss their, their destiny. Because mm -hmm. they don't take a chance. Mm -hmm. And then they get mad at a person like me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to take a chance. So we, we, we got to let that breathe. So a lot of times, right... The question that every square asks, okay, you gave your money to a pimp, what you got out of it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of <laughs> hoes, you know what I'm saying, I mean, they out here, they hoeing like uh, 90 going north, right? They hoeing up a storm, they stacking it like dirty laundry. Right. But they never end up with shit at the end of the game. That's not the case with you. So what do you say to a bitch that says she's a big old hoe because she sold some pussy and paid a pimp? 
but ain't got shit to show for. What do you say about them type of hoes? Why don't you have anything to show for? Mm-hmm. And how can you be a big hoe, even if, even if you had to start over a million times? Mm-hmm. Your game alone mm-hmm. should get you to to and, and out of any door. Mm-hmm. That you are capable of going through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. you should never be broke. Like, I was telling you before, this game is like celebrity shit. You know, mm-hmm. it's real fancy. It's real elegant. Mm-hmm. It's classy. It's it's never been trash. And nowadays, I see a whole bunch of trash. Whenever I see girls on my timeline, Ken, mm-hmm. twerking and doing all... I know they got to do content and all that shit. It's so tacky. It's so tacky. Mm-hmm. If I was they folks, I'd be like, why, you know, why are you doing that? Mm-hmm. It's tacky. And how are you even getting customers doing this? Mm-hmm. Or are you doing it because you didn't added all these other pimps to your page and now you just a real life faggot ass, out of pocket ass bitch. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I feel like if you, you're with somebody, you shouldn't even have nobody on your page like that. It should be basically a, a, a customer base. Right. Okay, so uh, I, for full disclosure, you called me, Visa called me, and Miss Martina called me, mm-hmm. and y'all asked me to do a podcast, mm-hmm. and y'all thought that would be uh, a very great idea if we brought me and Martina. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't work, and uh, I mean, being that this was the vision of you and Visa, and I'm perpetuating that vision what, mm-hmm. what, what, do you, what do you think about you know uh, the whole scenario Martina not being here and you know me per, per, pursuing the uh, the podcast well you know again like when I brought it to your attention mm-hmm. um, me and Martina have been talking for a while and I've been on Visa for a long time you mm-hmm. know me and him been on each other for a long time but mm-hmm. How I even knew Martina or even knew about her, I was watching one of Visa stories mm-hmm. and I seen her on there. So I clicked on, I'm like, oh, who's this lady? You know, and I see her and I'm like, oh, she, she's, um, she has a lot in common with me. You know, mm-hmm. she's got one daughter and she's in the game and, you know, she's popping in and, mm-hmm. it, you know, she just reminded me. Of me, you know, and I was like, damn, I really want to meet this lady. I really want to see what she's about. So I hit her up in the inbox, like, what's up? You know, and me and her got to chopping it up, and and I really kind of got to tell her my story and where I came from and what I had going on, and and I told, and then around that time, Kenny Red had passed away, mm-hmm. and I told Mama Martina, I said, you know, now is the time that you need to really network and get out here because your name's ringing. This Mm -hmm. is your time to really shine and Mm -hmm. and gravitate to what Kenny Red left you as a legacy because Mm -hmm. you are a part of his legacy. And this is why everybody knows you. They know you through Kenny Kenny Red, Red. even though you've been with other pimps. You've Mm -hmm. been with other people, Mm -hmm. which is not talked about. Mm Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like everybody acts like this lady's only been with one person. No, she's been with multiple people. She's with Virgil first, I believe. Yeah, and a Grand couple Master, other people. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, this is not the only person you've been with. And I'm sure Kenny Red has had plenty of other hosts too, you mm-hmm. know? They just don't openly probably speak about yeah, me and Ken, their relationship. Me, 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 me and Kenny, you know, uh I don't put it out there, you know, and uh we we found out through you know, we never served each other per se, but we had a couple of the same bitches out there in the game over the years. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Shout, shout, right. shout out to the uh, the Bay Area bitch. You know who he is, hope. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to give you no motherfucker alive like right now, bitch. But you know who he is. You can't read the whole year, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Both of us got some money out that ass, bitch. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm retired, though. I'm just... I'm just he throwing a little, little joke. Shit. He get to popping this shit. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But you know what? Like, I really, really thought that with with her avenue and then your avenue and then the podcast stuff was really jumping around that time. Like, everybody was coming out with a podcast. Mm-hmm. Am I right or am I wrong? You're right. So, everybody was coming out and not, and it popped in my head, like, you and Ken, because she was like, I really want to do X, Y, and Z, and I'm like, girl, 
I think you and Ken would do good because Ken's already got his stuff going on with the HHF stuff. Mm -hmm. You was over there in Atlanta minding your business. You didn't even know nothing about this. No. So, I'm like, you know, Ken over there doing stuff with the HHF. I feel like y'all would really team up good, which it was. It was a great collab. Mm -hmm. It really was. Yep. And I feel like egos got in the way of certain things. You know, and I feel like the loyalty, the loyalty and the respect, you know, if somebody puts you in position to do something, mm -hmm. whether if you're in the game, if you're not in the game, mm -hmm. that shows your character. Mm -hmm. And when you go behind someone's back mm -hmm. and underhand them, mm -hmm. that's fucked up. Mm -hmm. And that'll make me not want to fuck with you. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't give a damn how close we are. Mm -hmm. Once you start doing all this little extra shit, that because then that let me know. Let's say we somewhere, and we out, and let's say we we run into a, some million dollar custos or something. Mm -hmm. Bitch, you gonna underhand me on the little shit, so that lets me know you'll underhand me on the big shit. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. When, when I see people doing that, I fall back, Ken. I don't care if it's a, a dude, a female, family, mama, daddy, cousins, whoever. Mm -hmm. You start treating me like I will fall back. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I was like, you know, I knew you, you know, uh, through uh, coming and shopping in my store all the time. And I saw you in the past and a lot. I just seen you a lot. And, you know, when you and Visa and y'all call me, Mm -hmm. You know, I thought it was a great idea, you know. And for the record, I don't have no issues with no one. And if I do, you know, forgiveness is a gift I give to myself, not that I give to others. I'm not for to drink the poison, inspect the person that I want to die from the poison. To right. die, I'm going to die because I'm drinking the poison. So I don't let nobody live in my head rent free. So I'm long gone from the situation. I just thought that I would let the people know that this show was inspired by you, Visa, and Martinez all calling me on the three-way saying, man, you need to do a podcast. So I just want to give you your uh, shout-out and give you your flowers while you're alive. Thank and you. <laughs> a lot of people would know that, you know, that, you know, you and and her and uh, I don't know what y'all situation is, but I hope y'all get past it. I love Mama Martina. I do. I love her, you know, as, as a person. It's just, you know, some certain things and ways that people go about me in general i just don't do that because the type of person that i am you know maybe somebody else might deal with that shit, but i i don't i'm very but zero you know tolerance. i knew martina a long time ago before i know you were visa mm -hmm. you know because uh she used to mess with this guy in, in atlanta that i used to know named will you know what i'm saying so i knew her and then you know uh her niece used to be down with me at one point in time you know what i'm saying so i knew her like that uh -huh. you know and i'll have no, no issues with her, but you know, once we start doing business, I got to really know her. You know what I'm saying? Me and you know, I'm the type of person. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna open my arms to you. You know, like I mean, she tell the truth. You know, I took over the iced tea house. You know, she's there with ice and cocoa. You know, we in a multi million dollar mansion. You know, giving her plenty of action. So you know what I'm saying? I only have good intentions. Now, if somebody. You know, get in your ear, get in your head, and tell you something about me. I think that that should be predicated on what you and I got going on. Not well, that's with people. when your hoe steps in. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's when that that lets you know what type of hoe you are, mm -hmm. because anybody can get in the hoes ear and move her around, can't they? Mm -hmm. Can a, can a, can yeah, somebody yeah, can get you out of pocket and move you on around and, and take you home? Yeah. Yeah. So that lets me know where her hoe instead. Mm -hmm. That let me know, bitch, you're able to be moved around. Mm -hmm. You understand? Absolutely. Like, I'm just looking on that prospect in the aspect yeah, from the of game. the game. Right. Not just saying, oh, because so, so this person, so you, like, you, I'm you, like, you, shit. So you expected more out of her, that's what you I said. I did. Okay. I really did. Because I looked up to her as a veteran mm -hmm. and, and someone that I knew that was, I put on a pedal stool. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I know real bitches. I done been around real top-notch bitches. You mm -hmm. know, they, they really out here having it they way. So if everybody is giving this person that top-notch... Credibility. Like, show that to me. Well, you know, I, I have a saying that you, your gift will take you 
where your character can't go. You know what I mean? You can have the gift of hoeing, right? But if you don't have the character, your character and your gift don't, uh, is not rhythmatic, it doesn't match. Mm -hmm. In other words, what I'm saying, you can take a hoe out the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out the hoe. Right. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So if you got any sucker shit in you, hey man, what's in the dark gonna come to the light every motherfucking time? You know what I'm saying? You know, like niggas like, yeah, man, that's a real life hoe. I said, give me 30 days. I know. Mm -hmm. I ain't had bitches come to me and give me 400 white bitches. I'm like, bitch, bitch, this is crackhead money, bitch. You know what I'm saying? I mean, 400? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and then, you know, I said, okay, well, bitch, you know what I'm saying? I mean, here's how we're gonna play this. Go on out there, get the money, bitch. You know, hold up, you know what I'm saying? I mean, and if you can get me a thousand, bitch, before 12, before the crack of dawn, bitch, hey, guess what? We're gonna have a nice time. We're gonna go, you know, take two bottles of more and get our throat wet. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? I'm really, you know, loving this bitch up. She think I'm really for the campaign for a whole drain. No, I'm not for the campaign. I'm just for the show this bitch, bitch, you miss hoeing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you ain't hoeing up to the potential that you can hold on. So I'm going to give her an expectation with a doggy treat. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Now you give a dog a treat. You know, the doggy treat is the pimping. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so she thinking about the pimping. Oh, I'm finna, he's got all these other hoes. I'm finna get to spit the with daddy. Bitch, come in with the 800,000. Okay, bitch, see? You know what I'm saying, me, bitch? I just showed you that whoever you was under, bitch, you understand me? He had a very low expectation of hoeing and he had a very low expectation of his program. Mm -hmm. I said, I just level you up. I said, now, bitch, you didn't do this by 12. Now go stay out, bitch, till you know what I'm saying, 7 in the morning mm -hmm. and bring us another stack. Right. You know what I'm saying, me? And that's going to make a pimp happy, you know what I'm saying? And that's <laughs> that's how, you know what I'm saying, me? I would, would, would do it. But like I said, it would be a lot of women that say they can do this so a lot of niggas say this bitch is that you know one dude you understand know me he, he 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 i knocked him and you know he's telling oh, man this bitch is woo woo man woo 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 he's like this bitch is a faggot <laughs> she ain't man you know what i'm saying that bitch ain't shit my nigga you know but you know i'm being the ism uh -huh. i'm like this nigga might be trying to you know put 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 a john wayne on me right turn out this is one of the best bitches <laughs> i ever had this is a multi-thousand dollar getting bitch so, you know what I'm saying? So, my thing is, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, people fix their mouth to say anything. You know what I'm saying? So, motherfuckers say anything on the internet because mm -hmm. it can't be tested. Motherfuckers say anything on the phone because it can't be tested. But your actions is going to speak louder than your words. Right. So, if I, if you came to me and you said, Ken, woo do woo do woo and you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I'm this, I'm that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and then three weeks later, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you turn into the exorcist on the pimp. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That went you. That was your motherfucking representative. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what I'm saying, bitch. You know this bitch was representing you, and you was, you know, this was Tina. But you know, hey man, I really want to meet the real bitch. I want to meet the China bitch. You know what I'm saying? I Me, mean, what the China bitch horn is like? What the China bitch is like as a person? And nine times out of ten, and I say nine times, that's ninety percent. The bitches ain't who they say they is. Right. Now, and if somebody else giving you a negative depiction, like people can say anything negative about you, but me, just personally, seeing you over the years, I know you're a businesswoman. You know what I'm saying? I know you, like you said, you made uh, uh, your folks a million in a year. I know you to be that type of bitch. And that's where I want to get, that segue to my next question. Mm -hmm. What may inspired you to make the the one to do the book. I know you write your book. It's called 48 Laws of Gang Hoology, which you still in my shit, but go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead. I wanted to um, to show the other side of the game. Speak up a little bit. I wanted to show the other side of the game. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show the women's aspect because, you know, we really make this go round. You know, if you don't have a bitch, you don't got no, you ain't got nothing. You mm -hmm. got to have the bitch to, to, to have yeah, the, to be a pimp, you need a hoe. To have the program, mm -hmm. you know. And, and it's just not just that part. I really wanted to to um, to um, pinpoint the elevation uh -huh. of, yeah, because in your book, you spoke on different aspects. You had yeah, chapters the the of, band. right, and you, you spoke on, you know, the wrongs and the right, and, and basically, had told everybody what could happen, what can happen, and what cannot happen. You know, so I really want to show. I want to. I want to do that in my book. I want to show everybody like, hey, you can either be this type, you can be this type, or you can be this type. So it's gonna be forty-eight laws. Mm-hmm. 
Can you give us one law, an example of one law? So basically, like one of the laws is, you know, um, uh, what type of hole are you? Mm -hmm. Where are you good at? Because every business has a niche. Mm -hmm. And every woman could be a hoe because, mm -hmm. you know, like there's the difference from the sluts and the hoes. But mm -hmm. I feel like hoes are like professional. But. You know, you got prostitutes. And then you have hoes. You got hoes and pros. They're different. Yeah, they're different. Totally different. A hoe is someone that's a hustler. A prostitute is someone that's out there, you know, on the on the street, on the corner, mm -hmm. getting to that bag, turning tricks. I I feel like that's a prostitute. Just like you got call girls. You know, most of the time they're escorts. They're going to go get paid for their time. It's not considered, oh, we're going in here to go and have sex with somebody. We're going in here for a time and companionship. Did you ever read my other book, The Art of Human Chess? Um, I didn't. Well, in that I book, right, <laughs> I, I give the example of what you're saying. So, like, a lot of my pimp friends, you know, they wanted to be on the blade because, you know, niggas up all night drinking Hennessy. Some niggas blowing, some niggas smoking weed, you know, whatever they do, that's their motherfucking prerogative to me. I don't do none of this shit, but... You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, niggas out there, you know, popping shit. You know, mm -hmm. niggas getting knocked, niggas roasting each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, we all on the motherfucking track. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody out there doing their thing. And then, you know, I would, uh, you know, see niggas, that bitches down. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, you know, I know my bitches would get down because they do whatever the fuck I tell them to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm not Captain Save -O, I'm Captain Slave -O, You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Ain't no tricking. Look at my forehead. You see a T or a P. You see a P right there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm pimping Ken. So I know who I am, but I wanted to level my bitches up. So mm -hmm. I took my bitches off the blade sometime, and I would take them into these strip clubs. Mm -hmm. And I talk about it in my book. And they wouldn't sell an ounce of pussy, mm -hmm. but make all the money. Mm -hmm. If you go, if, if you ever see one of my bitches in the club back in the day, mm -hmm. and everybody dancing, you know why they. Keep, the hoes never know why they kept dancing because mm -hmm. my hoes would pay the DJ $25 take this rookie bitch and put her on the stage while this rookie bitch is on stage my hoes knocking the tricks you know what I'm saying and they knew the live tricks it'd be the old farmer looking dude that looked like he ain't got no money and you know that if he ain't look like he ain't got no money he in the strip club he got the fucking money mm -hmm. You know, I used to always tell the nigga that don't look, look like, like he, he got, got the money, money got, got the money. Because <laughs> ain't no motherfucker that's going to come to no strip club without no money. So my hoes would always peel them, you know, and if they, if, if the bitch lucky enough to beat my hoe to the, she would run up to the DJ, hey, DJ X, here, take this, here go uh, $50, call that bitch, you know, uh, let's call her Strawberry. Call mm -hmm. her and put her up on the, on, on, on on the stage. stage. Uh -huh. And her, play, let, run her three songs. By that time, she didn't pull them, took them to the ATM. Hit the inquiry, see how much money she worked with, take them in the back, and charge them gratuities. Mm -hmm. You know, she'd buy some wings, get the wings, mm -hmm. and then she charged a thousand dollars tip. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? And they never sold an ounce of pussy. Mm -hmm. So that's the level of taking the bitch to the next level. And then you know, motherfuckers would be like, well, you know, he ain't got no more money. Bitches, you yeah, serious? Yeah, I feel like the blade is like the beginning. No, but but check this out, <laughs> China, China. I know I know you can relate to me because you get money, right? Uh -huh. So niggas niggas would be like, yeah, man, my bitch got the trick for everything. Uh -huh. You didn't tell the trick to take her to Walmart <laughs> and get some gift cards. You didn't tell her to go get an iPhone or anything electronic that you can flip. Mm -hmm. I said it it never stopped. You know what I'm saying? And I I noticed that like I used to have fucking fucking closets full of electronics for Walmart and Target. After the bitch didn't broke the trick for all the money, now she's running his credit card up. Mm -hmm. I used to send them bitches to the trick to the fucking uh, to the casino. You know, if you go to the casino, if you take ten thousand, you can take ten thousand out as a credit, mm -hmm. and then they charge fifteen percent. But the bitch got the whole fucking other eighty five percent. You know, uh -huh. to break the trick on. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so you know, these were different different levels of the game. You know what I'm saying? Me. So when you say holeology, what type of hole is you? You know what I'm saying? I mean, is that one of your chapters? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I want to know. Yeah. I want to know what, what, where are you good at? Where are you good at, bitch? Or, or can you learn? Or are you are just you here for somebody to help you? Because, listen, nowadays you got a lot of lazy bitches. Mm -hmm. And they just want to sit up and somebody help them get the money. 
So this book, when we expect to get this whole whole, whole book? I don't know, Kim. When we gonna get it? Mm. Oh, you want you want to go to my agency? <laughs> yeah, I gotta get well, paid I have, now. I, I gotta get paid. I, I have I gotta somebody get, I gotta you know, on the sentence. back end to you know ghostwrite me, but um, I had some personal things that I had to get taken care of, you oh, know, you took care and um, I felt like once I I got that done, I'd be more focused because I want it to be like a classic. A New, a New York it's best gotta, time. Well, so. you know, you're dealing with Pippin King. You know, it's got to be a classic. Yeah. So. Well, well yeah. I, I, I always told you that that would be a book that I think would do well, especially if it had my endorsement on it, because I already wrote the book. You know, I was I did a, a, a webinar, I guess that's what they call it nowadays, and I was talking about, you know, the game. So in there, I said, listen, I said, here's the game. I said, when I wrote the book, The 48 Pair of Powers, The 48 Laws of Game, mm -hmm. I knew I was coming out the back of The 48 Laws of Power. So when somebody typed in 48 right. Laws, my book would come up with Robert Greene. If right. somebody said Art of War, then my book, The Art of Human Chess, would come up with it. You know, I made my book a self-help book because if I said self-help, it would be right there next to Napoleon Hill. And that's Napoleon why I Hill. said, you know, I wanted to go ahead and come out with the book with Pippin Ken because I knew... No one in this game has a book mm -hmm. that was successful. Am I right or wrong? I wouldn't care if Matt and Don Juan did a book. I ain't read that motherfucker. He did a book. If uh, he did, years he ago, it, I ain't read it. It, 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 it. It's a good book, but I think the difference between my book and a lot of other pimp books is that my book was catered to both sides, the squares and the pimps mm -hmm. and the holes. So the holes and the pimps can... They can ride down the first chapter, get to page 10, and then I'm talking about the, the ism. Side. I'm yeah. at the ism, and I'm explaining the comparison, mm -hmm. even with the art of human chess. My other book, you know, I talk about Barack Obama. I talk about uh, 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 Oprah Winfrey, Magic Johnson, and I show how Barack Obama, you know, had, he was a chess player too. Mm -hmm. I tell every motherfucker the game, I said, nigga, I'm always going to play chess because I'm a king. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm a king, so I need queens and, and pawns queen. and roots, roots <laughs> and shit to protect this ism. You know what I'm saying? So it's always chess. It's never checkers with me. I, I graduated from being a hoe. Because mm -hmm. I call myself a boss bitch. You're a boss bitch. I'm a boss. You know, like, I have multiple streams of income. So mm -hmm. it's not like I'm just depending on one. But I know I could always go back and convert to, you know, doing what I know best. Mm -hmm. But I feel like. Now I'm able to really just say, "Hey, I'm a boss." You know, I've I've been out here running some shit. No one is on the back end of me. You know, when you look at certain women, they always got a man that's on the back end of them. Mm -hmm. I don't have a man on the back end of me. Mm -hmm. You bossing I, up? I, yeah, I never. Well, I just I I'm married to the game. But China, it has been a pleasure. And uh, if it's anything I'm you want to say, I'm married to this game. Ken. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> so you want to let them know where they can find you at, and let them um, know. Well, I got those Frenchies. You know, if you guys need some puppies, you need any whelping services, and you have a, a, um, a kennel business or whatever to that degree, you always can hit me up, China Dog Kennels. Um, I'm everywhere, you know. I'm everywhere out here, but yeah, I'm in the dog game now, and. Okay. And that's kind of like um, what I'm trying to learn right now in the in the dog game because it's just like the game. All game. It's I, just like the <laughs> this game, but it's a different game. But well, yeah, I love it. Well, one game pair another. You know what I'm saying? If somebody robbed me, they're gonna go to DGs and give it to a bitch. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? The bitch gonna go give it to a drug dealer. The drug dealer gonna go give it to a weed man. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But one game pair another game. You know what I'm saying? Me so. We all in the game. You sell some dogs, you get five thousand. Might go buy you some weed. You know what I'm saying? Me. So, one game pay another. So the game is the game, but we can't have the game without some game being played. All of us make up the game collectively. So, yeah, oh, go ahead. just like HHF. Yeah, HHF. That's y'all's game. Yeah, yeah. Well, That's a game. Yeah. And it's a family too. It's like an organization. It's a fraternity, and the fraternities are always been game. Did you join up? You become a member yet? No. I go go to. to the dot com and join. I do need to go and join. Y'all go join too. 
Shit, okay. I feel so bad, Ken, because I'm no, like, no, 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 don't sweat it, don't sweat it. So, but I so, want to be uh, honest. I didn't want to be over here like, hell yeah, I joined, and right, I ain't yeah, joined. Yeah, you keep, know how you guys yeah, 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 up your ass for lying. <laughs> you know not to lie no more. <laughs> you ain't lying since. <laughs> we can't lie. <laughs> I thought that was a good way to end it. But uh, hey, y'all, look. Uh, Hey, man, thank you for watching The View from the Game. Hey, man, make sure y'all watch all the other episodes. Y'all also go to HHFMag.com. We got the award show coming, HHF Award, and we got the Ugly Money Summit going from the 5th to the 7th. If you want VIP tickets or you want tickets, go to eight, go to Eventbrite slash HHF and Awards, and the tickets will come up. Or if you want a VIP, most of y'all know me, hit me up. And uh, if you want to know my number, it's the same thing. It's my cash app, 404-790-9627. So if you want to cash app, you want to donate to the show, ain't no nation like a donation, or you can leave a super chat. And uh, also, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at RealPipKin. So I'm going to let uh, China leave her uh, cash app. If you like what China said, you want to uh, donate to China. A lot of people, you know, from all over the country, people from the Ukraine, people from China, they always send us a donation, you know, on our cash app. Make sure you put under the cash app, you know, donation from people in the And I do game. have a nonprofit organization. Um, I give all proceeds to, to the seniors. Okay. So I deal with the seniors. Um, I go and volunteer all the time at the living centers and stuff like that. So all your proceeds would go to um, the senior communities and just help out, you know, people that don't have family. What's the cash app? Oh, cash app. China Doll 214 is my cash app. And then you can follow me on Instagram, China Doll Kennels. It's been a pleasure having you, sister. Thank you so much. Come back again Ken, soon. I, it, it was a pleasure. You know, yeah. it always is. Mm -hmm. Don't lie. Al going to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See y'all ladies. Say what's up, man. It's your boy, Charles White, man. I'm just letting y'all know I accept my nomination for comedy over the year with the Hip Hop Fraternity and the Ugly Money. I'm sorry. Uh, Nietzsche Ugly Money Comedy Award. What's up, nigga? Oh, you see it? Yeah, yeah, you see it. Black Jewelers. Yeah, yeah, Black Jewelers. Yeah. <laughs> hey y'all, it's your girl Sweet Shelly, and I'm your hottest host for the 2024 HA Chippin' Ugly Money Awards, baby. Yes, along with the beautiful Miss Taylor, okay? And we're gonna be live at the Atrium in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm. So I know you're wondering, hey Shelly, how do I book to do live performances? Or how do I book a VIP table? Well, fear no more, my darling. All you have to do is call 404-790-9627. Voila, magic. What up, it's Ugly Money CEO, Ugly Money Nietzsche. Listen, April 5th through the 7th, the Ugly Money Music Summit slash HHF Ugly Money Awards. Now on the 7th, y'all gotta get y'all tickets because we have an award show. We're gonna be announcing the winner of the Ugly Money Music Summit and also awarding and commemorating and representing for all of the talented people, the legendary people, tons of celebrities in the building. Definitely go to the website to get your tickets today. It's that Ugly Money. Hey, say what's happening, man? T.I.P. the King, uh, hey, listen, man. On behalf of myself, Grand Hustle, I accept the HHF Awards. Hey, thank you to Ken and all of the pimps and players that uh, had a hand in this award. You hear what I'm saying? Appreciate y'all. Ugly money, everybody. All the money. You understand? Appreciate y'all, man. Hey, man, say, man, you already know what I'm finna say, man. It's the kid that did, not the kid that didn't. The reason why the sauce word was written, the master, the pastor, the him in Alaska to make the bread come faster. And I will be at the 2024 Hip Hop Fraternity Awards. I accept my nomination for album of the year. The kid that did spin this game for a motherfucking lame, if you know what I'm saying, man. Salute the Pippi Ken, it's the Drippin' Twin, and we're gonna be out there once again. Oi. Yeah, what's up? This your boy Lil J from Crown Mob, and we performing our greatest motherfucking hit, Nope If You Buck, at the HHHF Ugly Money Hip Hop Awards. You dig what I'm saying? We coming out. Pippi Kane gonna be there. Lil J gonna be there. Crown Mob gonna be there. T.I. and others. Y'all come up. Y'all pull out the whips. All y'all ladies come up. Be sexy. We gonna have some great fun. It's gonna be lit. You know what I'm talking about? Eight times, stay down. What's up, what's up, man? It's your boy, Big Sal, Eastside Boys, man. That's right, April 7th, I'm in the building, man. Accepting my award, HHF, y'all all know what it is, man. The biggest award show, it's going down, man. Ain't no hit the stage, turn that thing out, you know what I'm talking about? Man, I'm about to go get on my bike and head home.
Okay, this is OG Phil Moss Slim Pokes again. I will be in Atlanta, able to accept accept my H A F award, Ugly Money Award. What up, y'all? You know it is your man Freeway Ricky Ross. I do accept the award from the Hip Hop Fraternity. Thank y'all. 2024. You win. This book right here, Pimpin' Ken laid it on me. My God. <laughs> Cross the tracks, man. Now, now let's talk about this book. And Ken is the homie. He's he a legend. He a legend. Book. I fuck with Ken Stevo. Uh -huh. They came to me with, you know, Simon Schuster. Boss, me and you, the shot call. You write a book about somebody, it's about what they've been through. Hey, how you doing? This is James C.B. Gray, president and national spokesperson for the hip hop fraternity. Thank you for watching the trailer of the making of an autobiography of a celebrity featuring Little Boosie. Bow, bow, bow. It bounce when she walk. Mike Fresh in the building, you hear me? April 7th, HHF Ugly Money. HHF Ugly Money Awards is going down April 7th. Man, look. I just rocked T.I. Club, tow that bit upside down. I just seen Tip say that he was finna be at the Ugly Money Awards. It's going down. If you ain't coming, something wrong with you. For real, for real. Shout out Pippa King, HHF Ugly Money Awards, April 7th. We out. So you're going to be high, so. Yeah. So I'm going to sign first. And that's the jacket. You know, Officially signed the HHF. Okay, it is. Prestige of John Hancock, young man. Come on, get it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, live on the Beehive Show. You know that's right. Saying? Let's go. Yeah. 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 So, 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 uh, <laughs> hey, man, welcome to the team, man. So, hey, so, Chef. Mike, when it comes to the streaming side of stuff and going viral, man, I mean, break that down to me. How does one go from the ground all the way up? Yeah, man, I, I can't really explain that. I got to get out on the guide or something. I'm with you. I'm with you. Honestly, because when I do stuff like that, I be like, how do I do it again? I don't know. I, I ain't do it. <laughs> and like, like I said, be the women that they love me so much. So when we made this this bounce when she walked song uh, months ago, bro. Yeah. And they took it all over TikTok, doing the challenge all in other countries, Africa, China, billion streams. I don't know how, bro. Yeah. I, I was at the house and my drawers recording that. I didn't put up nothing. Like, I ain't. I don't know, bro. Yeah. Like people just love it. Like some I people say, it, I, I put voodoo in that music. Most of y'all don't know him once he introduces us. He got up with billion streams. I'm never gonna be shut. What up, bro? Bow, 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 and um, he had, had me open up. So um, he was bringing me to the back room, like, man, uh, he just gave me the back end. He like, man, I'm finna, uh, you got some wings back here, man, come chill. So he bring me to the back room, me and my partners go, we come bombard in the room, yeah. boosting all his partners in the room. The way we walked in was all wrong, like. Yeah, like, oh, I guess these wings, and these And they were looking at us like, man, who these dudes? <laughs> What's going on? They like, well, y'all must want to piss or something. That's what somebody said. I said, you know what? I saw do. I posed and I got on the pocket mud. So I told G to like, bro, you tripping? Don't never, ever, ever, ever do that ever. I done rolled the call BG and the Dodge Magnum before. Shit, BG was at the crib in the living room before. Shit, I was at the uh, bling, bling Bling video shoot, the baller block and movie set. We was at the mall one time. They had like a hundred girls on the tour bus. I was little, I had to go on there to go pee. And I just went on there and stayed on there. I was sitting on there talking to the girls and stuff. Like an hour later, my mama and BG and them come get me off the bus. Mr. Pa, 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 the man himself, Mike Fresh, performing live at uh, HHF Networking Mondays at Ice Bar, 5456 5A Road, Atlanta, Georgia. It's free to get in, free to perform, free to park. HHF. Hey, April 7th, regular money. I told y'all, man, we already smashed last year. Yeah. Ugly Money Hip Hop Summit was a, I'm talking about a movie. We went all the way up there. But this year, Hip Hop Fraternity, they combined it. Like I told you, Ugly Money, and you already know. King Futuristic, Futuristic Leland, Mr. Put That Stuff On. You feel me? We'll be headlining Futuristic Love. Pimpin' Ken, thank you for the opportunity. Ugly Money, you know we coming to tell the stage of April 7th. Y'all know where y'all need to be. King Lingo. Check this out, man. Boss Talk 101 wants you guys to come down to the HHF Ugly Money Awards April the 7th. It's going down. 
You don't want to miss it. Them guys, hey, listen, you see the move. Brothers in power, empowering other brothers. Boss Talk 101, HHL, shout out to Ugly Money. It's going down. Be there, April. Yo, man, it's Dope Boy Juice, man. HHL Ugly Money Awards, man. I know what time it is. Pop out, man. I will be nominated as Most Consistent Artist of the Year. So, man, I will be performing also. So, man, make sure y'all pop out. Stay tuned, man. Shout out to Bibi McKinn, man. I know what it is. Yo, this cat. I accept my nomination for the HHF Ugly Money Award. Big Cat Records. You know what I mean? Respect. My name is Lexis, and I accept my nomination for the Ugly Money and HHF Award. This your boy Jupiter the Great, and look, I accept my I accept my award, because I'm winning this one for the hip hop fraternity with my dog Pimp and Ken. We go way back, you know what I'm saying? Juve. Got it, boy. It's a kid. Yuck, mouth thugging it out, baby. And I want y'all to come to the third annual. That's right. All three of y'all to the hip hop <laughs> fraternity music awards, baby. With ugly money this year, baby. April the 7th, baby. In the A. That's right, baby. In the ATL. Be there. Be a square bear, baby. Yada. So, I accept my nomination, man, to the hip hop fraternity, man, this year. I know I missed it last year, but this year, man, I'm coming to get mine coming to get what's deserved with ugly money man y'all know what it is y'all know what time we all man and get ready for it baby because we on the way april april 7th this is grandmaster i will be accepting my award from the hip-hop attorney awards look for me real soon keep your eyes on your prize What's up? You already know what it is. It's the landlord. I will be at the HHF accepting my award, man. Listen, this is going to be big landlord talk right there, man. Y'all can come. I'm going to have my VIP table. Y'all can chat it up with me. We're going to be doing whatever, man. I will be accepting my award. You better come there, man. I'll see y'all each other. Hi, everyone. I would like to say that I sincerely accept my nomination for the Hip Hop Fraternity and the Ugly Money Award. Thank you. Thank you. Ken, Ivy, and everyone that's a part of this event. Thank you. Bye. Yo, what up, man? It's your boy, Chaotic, and I accept my nomination for the Hip Hop Fraternity Award. And I should win, because who hotter than me? <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is James C.B. Gray, President and National Spokesperson for the Hip Hop Fraternity. I'd like to invite everyone to come out to our third annual Hip Hop Fraternity and Ugly Money award ceremony on April 7th, 2024. This event's gonna be taking place at 5479 Memorial Drive in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Once again, 5479 Memorial Drive in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Be there or be square. We're gonna have a whole list of celebrities, socialites, but most importantly, we're gonna have our hip hop fraternity members from our chapters throughout the United States. So this will be a great opportunity for our chapter members to network, collaborate, vibe, and be part of the, the, the this family that we've created over the years. All right. Much love to our CEO and founder, Ken Ivey, who made this all possible. And we're out here trying to take it to the next level. All right. Hip Hop Fraternity Awards, third annual, 2024. 5479 Memorial Drive, Stone Mountain, Georgia. Be there. I hope to see everybody there. And who knows? You might win an award. For more information about awards, nominations, and also to become a member, go to our website, www.thehiphopfraternity.com. Once again, www.thehiphopfraternity.com. Find out all information about the award ceremony, all information about who we are, what we do, and become a member at the same time. All right. Hey, 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 what up, y'all? This is your boy, Ken. I, you're watching The View from the Game. Thank you for tuning in. If you're on Instagram, you watch me live. I am the actual man behind the Instagram. Yes, I do answer my DMs. When you DM, you DM in me. Hey, but check this out, man. While I got your attention, make sure you go get my book, The 48 Laws of Game. That's right, The 48 Laws of Game. You can get it at audible.com. All you got to do is type my name, Pimpin Ken. When you get to audible.com, and this book, as well as my other book, The Art of Human Chess, this is the book everybody's talking about. This is the book that your daddy should have taught you about. Everything that your daddy didn't teach you the game, 
It's in this book right here. In the Art of Human Chess, the study guide to win, teach you how to maneuver, teach you how to finesse, teach you how to play chess, teach you how to outsmart your enemy. You got to get my books, classics. Hey, man, also, man, make sure you subscribe, like, and make sure you let everybody know through notifications where to come and get this joint at by sharing. And also, I am also the proprietor and the owner of HHF Mag, HHF Clothing, HHF uh, Awards, and HHF Radio. Hey, man, stay tuned, man, and go to thehiphopfraternity.com and check us out. And every Monday, we at the Ice Bar. That's right, 5456 Fairville Road, Atlanta, Georgia. Every artist get in free. Every A&R get in free. Every executive get in free. Everybody is free. Artists get to perform for free, and you get to park for free. The only free game in town. I get my style from a lot of niggas from like just growing up seeing a lot of niggas and like damn he just fly them up with a suit suited and booted and shit. And as I grow up, grow up, I'm like man, I gotta make sure my shit together, you know what I'm saying? Make sure I'm popping. You know what I mean? You was driving to Chicago, it was me and my pops. Well first he picked me up, we slide. He like man, we finna go to Chicago. Don't tell your brother, don't tell nobody. What's got going on? What's up, this league? So we go to Chicago. We in the, uh, I think we was in the S500. And uh, we get there. It's a white, blonde, white lady. And uh, she sweet out the car. She pull up. Get, we pull up. She give us the keys to a Mercedes, a black Mercedes. And we, we switch out the car and get back on the road. I'm like, okay, some crazy shit going on. Pop. Love you like me. Said you'd always be around, love you, daddy me. Left my chest vacant, no style. You ripped out my heart, you tear me apart. You sticks and your stones are breaking my bones. But it's sickening to say you won't leave me alone. Um, I got a new project coming up. I'm still pushing brick by brick. It's going crazy right now. HHF Awards, April 7th in Atlanta. Make sure y'all get y'all tickets right now. It's Young Supreme, and I am nominated for HHF Best Artist of the Year Award, man. So make sure y'all are there and check it out, man. April 7th, HHF Ugly Money Awards, man. Make sure y'all pop out April 7th. Hey, man, they don't Let know who he is, man. Give, give a little, give a couple verses, bow, man. Bow, bow, bow. I got a big booty bent from the south. Bow, bow, bow. bow. My friend checking in this bitch. You know HHF. 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 Yo, what's going on? I'm back from the game, man. Dallas Chapter CEO, man. You know, we popping real big, man. April 7th, y'all beat it up, be square. Y'all better tap in like that pack in for sure. And I got nominated for the Ugly Money HHF Awards, so y'all better. That's right. Come check us out every Monday at HHF Networking Mondays. We are CEO Atlanta Chapter Mallory King Dido performing live at Ice Bar, 5456 Five A Road, Atlanta, Georgia. It's free to get in, free to perform, free to park. HHF. Wow, this Terrence Gangster Wig, aka OG Giggity, aka Mr. Answer Right Back, aka the People's Champ, Terrence of E. Guess what? It was seven. I'm gonna be down in Atlanta. I'm going to the HHF and Ugly Money Award. I'm pulling up all y'all bad bros. Y'all come out, holler at your boy, cause that's what I'm about to start my pimping. Wow. What's up, y'all? It's your girl T Boss, Cash Money Princess, and I will be performing live at the HHF Ugly Money Awards on April 7th. Shout out to Very Minutes and Uncle Simon. Hey, this is vital. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing national COO. Oh, oh that's the big dog. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know I'm sorry. It's the big dog. COO. Oh, that's the big dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Cameroon. I'm from Africa. What's up, Cameroon? Hey, what's up, man? I hear you chasing one thing, man. You know, get popular. Right. <laughs> hey, look, man. Do something out there. 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 Yeah, so, whatever he said, do do that, nigga. Yeah, do that. Do one, do one, man. Do one. Yeah, yeah, do that. Afrobeat, Afro 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 Oh, that's the new shit. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the that's new, new shit. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's All the, the way to Africa, man. Yeah, yeah. If you're a model and would like to come to our Los Angeles model retreat, Yash Edition, July 26 to July 29, 2024, make sure you sign up at com. We're gonna have runway practice. We're gonna have yacht party. We're gonna have mansion party. We're gonna be doing club happy. And then we got free t-shirt. You know, you can get your free t-shirt at vitalfilm.com.